Welcome back to CF Tesla. Today we're gonna to talk about three very important things to anyone who owns or is planning on owning a Tesla. We're gonna talk about getting level five autonomy this year, regulations on self-driving both here in the United States and in UK, and Tesla solution to customers not getting the service that they want from the service centers. First, let me explain what level five autonomy is and how the rating system works. There are six levels of driving automation. It starts at zero and goes up to five. Zero means no automation, where the driver does 100% of the driving tasks. Five means the car does 100% of the driving tasks. Breaking through the level two autonomy or partial automation seems to be where the resistance comes in. It is at level three where we start giving the car enough responsibility to actually make decisions, although these decisions still will need to be approved by the driver. Around the industry, you see many different car companies putting out cars with level two automation. Vehicles with autonomous capabilities include Tesla Autopilot, which is actually at level three, Cadillac Super Cruise, Mercedes-Benz Driver Pilot, and then Volvo Pilot Assist, just to name a few. As you can imagine, even getting a reliable level three autonomy has been a lot of work. Even though right now it is pretty awesome, there are many who think it's still quite unstable. So how is Tesla going to take on this huge task of going from a level three conditional automation where vehicles can perform most tasks to level four, which is high automation where vehicles perform driving tasks, most all of them, but under specific circumstances and the human override is still an option to level five, which is full automation where the vehicle performs all tasks under all conditions. Essentially the car is doing all the driving. This graph even goes on to say zero attention, which to me is more than zero interactions. I picture zero interactions as sitting there with your hands hovering over the wheel, ready to pounce, but not having to actually do it. Zero attention to me means taking a nap in the backseat or reading a book. Elon said last August in a tweet that, quote, Tesla is developing a NN or neural network training computer called Dojo to process truly vast amounts of video data. It's a beast. He then said in a tweet, quote, I drive the bleeding edge alpha build in my car personally, almost at zero interventions between home and work, end of quote. And this was last August and has only gotten better since. We've seen evidence of this in the full cell beta tests that we're seeing around on YouTube and other people that are lucky enough to actually be inside the program. And no, I'm not in the program yet. Elon said on the 2020 Q4 call just the other day that he would consider it a level five autonomy when the car is at least 100% of what a human driver is capable of driving, and he would even like to see it even higher than that, and he thinks it can be. He wants the car to be safer than a human driver. I know this sounds like a crazy stretch to achieve this in this time frame, but just look at what we've done already in terms of safer than a human driver. I mean, look at auto parking, for example. How many accidents have we heard of, of people backing into a spot just to have, you know, nicked the car beside them or bumped into them somehow? I, one of my only accidents I've ever actually been in in my car was backing into a parking lot where I was backing around and I went over a speed bump and it just jerked me wrong. Anyway, I ended up backing into the car, to the side, kind of the side of my car over here and that wouldn't have happened with autopilot. Autopilot is so good at backing in and the sensors just simply don't let you hit anything. And I've put the car through so many different times when I've tried this and it gets a little nerve wracking because the car does get close to the vehicles. But after doing it now probably over a hundred times, I've never even come close to actually hitting the car. Look at Auto Park. Auto Park is pretty amazing on what it's able to do. And you see this across multiple vehicles today, where you can pull up to a parking spot, tell the car, I wanna be in that spot. You basically take your hands completely off the wheel and let the car back itself right on in and you just watch it all happen. You can back into a parking spot right now in a Tesla that has cars on both sides of it, or you can let it do a parallel park and it gets very close to the curb and is always nice and straight. I've done this now at least 100 times and I've never had a close call of hitting somebody, but it does happen to people when they're doing it on their own. You hear about people that have backed into cars, they've you know had someone back into them, whatever, but through Tesla's eight cameras and sensors all over the car, you see all these things are being watched and it just really improves the likelihood of this not happening. Think about lane changes. How many times have you seen somebody in front of you driving where they're starting to get over and you're like, no, 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 don't. And then they see the last second in the car coming and they swerve out of the way. Or maybe even you yourself have been in that situations where you thought you saw your blind spot, you put your blinker on, you turn and someone's right there and you have to swerve or they've honked their horn at you. It's a scary thing. 
But with Tesla having all those sensors, 14 sensors, as well as the cameras, it is quite incredible how the car will, no matter what, only make you change lanes when it's safe. I have done it through intersections. I have done it on freeways, highways, traffic. And every time the car watches for a good opportunity and takes it when it makes sense, when it can see everything around. You can't see when you're looking left what's happening on your right. The car can because it's looking at every angle at all times. So it's we're already seeing some signs and some parts of autopilot even on level three right now where it does do things better than a human driver most of the time. So what is the neural net and how is this going to help us achieve level five autonomy in 2021? Tesla explains it on their website as our per camera networks analyze raw images to perform somatic segmentation, which is recognition and understanding of what is in an image at the pixel level, object detection and monocular depth estimation, which is a process of estimating depth of an object that is in 2D. Our bird's eye view networks take video from all cameras to output the road layout, static infrastructure, and 3D objects directly in the top-down view. Our networks learn from the most complicated and diverse scenarios in the world. This is all taken from the source of nearly 1 million vehicles, all in real time. A full build of autopilot neural networks involves 48 networks that take 70,000 GPU hours to train. Together, they output 1,000 distinct predictions at each time step. Wow, so lots of big words in there. What that really means is the car is sending millions of video footage back to Tesla's computer, big supercomputer called Dojo. And with that, they are training the neural network or the autopilot system to recognize and react to what it actually is learning. It is because of this process that Elon believes they will achieve autonomy, level five autonomy, by the end of 2021. Now, I know we've heard promises before. We had big promises about what we were gonna have at the end of last year with autopilot, and that of course didn't happen. Now they're saying at the end of this year, but I think we have a big leap and something else to think about right now. And that is the fact that over a thousand people right now do have that beta program. And we are seeing real time every single day, almost a new video coming out about these big improvements. And they're not like small improvements like we get on the program we have with autopilot now, the non full self drive beta. They're big improvements like car can now turn across four lanes to the left. That's a pretty massive achievement or being able to go through a roundabout. Again, pretty big achievement. I've tried this multiple times in my car and ended up just running over most of the roundabouts. Next, I want to mention briefly that Elon was asked on the Q4 call about where Tesla was with regulation on full self drive. This is a good question because it doesn't matter how good full self drive is or what it can do if it isn't allowed to operate. It was explained that in the United States, all the regulators are waiting for is simply the proof. If Tesla can show a proof of 100% or more of the human driver capability, then it's good to go. And they just want to see the launch go well. Now in the UK, on the other hand, that was not so much the case. He said they were halted at level three currently, that they're putting together teams and groups of people to hopefully push this through in the near future to level four or even level five. So he's pretty optimistic about it, but right now with all this stuff going on there uh, and the regulation, they were just stuck there at level three. I have to shout out to my viewers and fellow Tesla drivers in the UK. I feel for you guys. I know you paid for the same thing I did. Your cars just aren't doing the same thing. You don't get the same experiences that we have. I know so many of you told me that just with Summon alone, you pretty much have to be standing on the hood to even use it. And you've got so many complex road you know, systems there that it just seems like a huge challenge for the autopilot algorithm to even make that work. So we're thinking of you guys, and I hope it comes strong and level four and five for you guys at some point. But until then, hopefully we can entertain you with us trying it here in the US. Last, we got some new information on Tesla's service center challenges. It is a very talked about fact that Tesla has struggled in the past with service. They put most of their focus on things like getting their cars out and their quality and autopilot. And somewhere along the line, the service sort of fell to the sideline. To be clear, this is not my experience. I've had two different experiences with Tesla service, one at the service center and then one here at my house. And they've been absolutely perfect and simple and easy to use. And I've really enjoyed the process, but I have heard this from other people as well as reading it online. The problem people seem to have with the service is the distance to service centers, not being able to talk to someone on the phone and long wait times to even get in to get an appointment. When asked about this on the Q4 call, the response was the best service is no service. So Tesla's solution to their service problem is simply 
make it so they don't need service at all. I mean, it sounds awful ambitious. I mean, good luck. They also plan to increase home service from 40% of calls to 50% were reduced by one third, so that's good. And their goal with the cars that do have to go back is that you'll be in and out within two hours. In response to the issue of having someone to call and talk to on the phone, I get both sides of this argument here and this frustration. The drivers that have an issue with this, I get that because you know they maybe just wanna to talk to someone, explain their issue, they, maybe they don't know what their issue actually is, and to have someone to talk to about that to kind of diagnose it on the phone, do I need to come in, do I not? There's value in that. Plus the older generation that maybe doesn't live on a phone like our generation may do, they just wanna call up and talk to someone. You know, My grandma isn't gonna to wanna to figure out how to use some kind of an app to figure out how to get her car in. On the flip side, I totally get Tesla's stance on this as well. The whole world is going to apps and there are big advantages using the app. For one, that's a lot less people in a call center that they have to pay to answer phone calls. Number two, you still can chat with someone through the app. It actually works really well and it's all documented. You can look back on what was said. It actually works really well for that. The second thing is you can send photos back and forth of the issue. So there's that and you can't do that over a phone. You can make payments on the phone. You can see upcoming appointments. You can see pricing, your, your invoice. All that stuff is just done right over the Tesla app. So there's a lot of advantages to that as well. And they also mentioned that they were going to be adding a lot more features to the Tesla app uh, going forward in the future. So I'm not sure if that was the answer people were really looking for, but here's the thing with Tesla services. Most of the time you're going back to Tesla, it's right in the very beginning. You've just got your car, maybe there's some panel gaps, there's something wrong with the car from the factory. So if you've already had your car service, you've already dealt with the service center, chances are you're probably not going back. So lots of exciting things happening in 2021, things to look forward to. Comment down below what you're most excited about. Let me know, do you think they're gonna actually achieve level five autonomy this year? I mean, really think about it. Look at what they've achieved just since the full South Drive beta even started rolling out to where they are now. Do you think in the next 12 months they can make this happen? Tell you one thing, when it does, the drive challenges are gonna come back with a vengeance.